I want to talk to you about all the games you've played because there are still a bunch of big games coming out in 2016. You think it's over, it hasn't even started yet. Peter Brown, you're a reviews editor, so you're all too aware of what's coming up over the next two months. But just in case you weren't, prepared a fancy <laughs> list of some of the games that we should get excited about. How about all the games we should get excited about? Um, there's probably some people who are excited about WWE 2K16, which is not on this list. <laughs> so I don't want to say it's a perfect list, but it's a list of some of the biggest, shall we say, uh, games coming out over the next two months, starting this week. Actually, I'm not even sure if this counts. I'm not sure. This might be in that category. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5 is out this Friday. It's out this week. Not true. It's not? You're using outdated information. It's at, when's it out? The 29th. 29th? You're seeing the 25th and that's wrong. Yeah. It's out there, it got pushed back? I don't know, but Randy was talking to me the other day and he had the 25th. All I know is it's coming out the 29th. Okay, cool, so yeah. next week. Excited about that at all? I'm interested to see how, what they're gonna do. Like if they're gonna try to mimic the old style of gameplay completely uh, or introduce like new you know, aspects to the game. Uh, that's going to really determine how I feel about it because I can go back and play old Tony Hawk games, right? Mm. So if they really want to get me excited, they've got to do something with it. Um, but I would like a little bit of that classic flair. It's interesting. And by the trailers, it looks like they're very much leaning into the multiplayer sort of party mode, create parks and then share them with your buddies kind of aspect of it. So yeah. it'll be interesting to see how, how much they lean into that. Uh, but then I guess the first sort of real big box game coming out, who would have thunk it? The first of two uh, um, music playing games. Yeah. Back with a band, Rock Band 4 at October 6th. Uh, Mike, you excited about that? <clears throat> yeah. I haven't played Rock Band since College. Rock Band 3. Was that the last one? Co college for me was very recently, so that would have been, <laughs> like what, two four weeks months ago? ago? Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, Fair two enough. weeks ago. I have class in like 10 minutes, so let's hurry up. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm excited about this. I played both this and Guitar Hero Live at like preview events and whatnot. Um, Rock Band's kind of new twist they're putting on the gameplay is like the RPG progression mm. in um, the career mode. Which seems interesting enough to, I mean, I'm just excited for these instrument based rhythm games to come back just to have an excuse to play them again. Yeah, dust off the old drums. Uh, yeah. Of course, all, they've done a really good job, I think, of making sure that like old DLC and old peripherals work generally across the board for this. That brings me to my question, though, for both of you guys. Like, we may be excited for this game, but are you excited to have a bunch of plastic instruments around your house again? Uh, like, the guitars are pretty innocuous. Like, you can kind of, you know, you can store them away relatively easily. It's the drums that are a problem. And I've moved into a place that I'm on, a, like, a second level, so there's somebody sleeping underneath You're going to make friends real quick. I know. So that's, like, a massive problem, because I used to always, like, having a couple of drinks in the evening, <laughs> just kind of <laughs> larping on the drums for a while. It probably won't go down. I have to put like a little bit of mats underneath them again. Yeah. Uh, and of course, yeah, as you said, Guitar Hero Live coming out uh, just two weeks later on October 20th. Uh, any preference, Peter, between the two of them? I'm not really b big into these particular music games, mm. mostly because I suck at them. <laughs> Usually I don't like games that I suck at, but I think they're great. And I'm actually, I really like people who do enjoy these games, like play them, because they get really into it. Yeah. So sort of by proxy, I enjoy it. Um, but, you know, I kind of, I could give, I could go either way. Mm. Cool. Uh, folks in the chat, in the comments, uh, let us know which one of those you're uh, most, most interested in. Uh, HD collections, of course, have been a big thing this year. Again, Uncharted, the Nathan Drake collection coming out October 9th, uh, not too far away. You excited about that one, Mike? Yeah, I'm more excited. I haven't played the first one since I think it released. I forget what year that was, mm. but I mean, I played two and everybody says two is the best, but I was always one of those weird people who enjoyed three more, so I want to go back and see if I was just drunk or like just <laughs> being stupid. You were drunk. Well actually no, I would have been like, again, I don't know how old I was when those came out. But yeah, I, I always really enjoyed 3, but 2 I think, I didn't play through in one sitting. So I want to go back and see if it really is just as good as everyone says. Mm. Because again, I haven't seen it firsthand in a long time, but I'm sure this is a good primer for um, you know when 4 comes out. Yeah. yeah, that's the way I feel. It's a good way to get ready again. Not too many, next one. and not too many exclusives for PS4 as well coming up for the rest of the year. So that's at least, right. at least one you can you can get uh, if you're a PlayStation owner. Um, next up, uh, October 23rd. It's that time of year again. Time to play a new Assassin's Creed game, uh, Syndicate. I played it at uh, an event a couple of months ago, and I was actually sort of surprisingly entertained by the sort of the sandbox nature of some of those levels they've done and like the different sort of ways in which you can tackle them sort of in that like fun emergent way that like Metal Gear Solid the way you've got a base and you can sort of attack it in, in any way you want felt like Assassin's Creed games were very rigid for a long long time super super boring and like just too many missions that were tedious um, but yeah after playing that I, I felt a little bit better about it uh, have either of you played any syndicate over the past couple of months no but you've got me interested now mm. actually because the things you're mentioning are gone are problems I had with this series which is kind of why I left it behind yeah, and a problem they had with Watch Dogs as well. And like, I've 
like I've been very vocal about how irritated I've been with Assassin's Creed for a couple of years. Sure. So I'm kind of like I'm really cautious, optimistic to see uh, what our reviewer thinks about it when it comes along. Uh, Mike, you've played it at all over the past couple of months? Yeah, about a month ago I played as Evie. Uh, mm. So this is the first time that a woman is one of the leading characters, and you know. First on a console. First on a console. First on a yeah. console, correct. Uh, Assassin's Creed Liberation on, also had, mm. um, I forget her name. But, yeah, it's, it was, she supposedly is the more stealth-minded of the two. You can see Jacob's kind of just mowing Jack and people. fools. Yeah, <laughs> and I think he's getting the majority of the story missions, but if you just want to explore, you can be Eevee as much as you can, which will be cool because I've always kind of, when you have the choice, I've always gravitated towards stealth. Um, and you know, Metal Gear Solid Five. I've been doing the same thing, and Dishonored. I did the same thing. So I'd like to see if that carries over well and makes Syndicate interesting enough for me to get back into. Because uh, Black Flag, I really liked, but I haven't been that interested in the franchise for a long time. And I, it's, it's too bad because I really liked it for the first five yeah. entries. Yeah, <laughs> that's the problem they sort of had. Was almost the problem that happened with Tomb Raider, where eventually whoever got in control of the game or got like mainstream and then they just turned it into an action game when it was never an action game to begin with. Like Assassin's Creed used to be about spending a lot of, lot of time about killing one person and then suddenly you were just mowing down dozens and dozens of folks. Yeah. Um, on that same day, The Legend of Zelda Triforce Heroes coming out on that hot Nintendo Wii U. Peter, you excited about that? I am excited. Like Zelda is a series that just sort of warms my heart for the most part. You know, I, I've liked pretty much every game in the series. And uh, this one sort of falls into the same camp as Four Swords. Uh, so I'm, I played a little bit of E3. I enjoyed the aspect of you know, you're putting on different outfits. It changes your character and changes your abilities. And the interplay within a team dynamic uh, seems fun and interesting. It's not a mainline Zelda game, but that's okay. Cool. Something yeah. for the Wii U as well, uh, for owners of that, because unfortunately, of course, we've had a, a delay for uh, Star Fox as well. Uh, I think you mean something for the 3DS. Oh, sorry, yeah. 3DS. All yeah. right. Yeah. Is there anything else Why do you need Nintendo? I know. I own a Wii U. I play my Wii. I like my Wii U. Mario Maker's great. <laughs> Buy one this holiday. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> WWE 2K16, as I said, is coming out October 25th, only two days after those games. Uh, but that's also the same day that Halo 5 Guardians comes out. Uh, yeah. Mike, you excited about that? You a big Halo fan? Yeah, I am. Uh, this is actually the more excited I've been for Halo in a while. I said, well, it's, there haven't been that many Halos, but 4 came out, what, 2012? Yeah, it's, which been a, it's been a couple of years. Yeah, it was, I mean, the Master Chief Collection as a game is great. Obviously, it did not have a great launch, but now that it's all, for the most part, set, I really enjoyed playing through all those. I did those recently, and then I did Spartan Ops, that co-op mode in Halo 4 that bridges the campaigns between 4 and 5, mm -hmm. story-wise. Um, I just played Halo 5 campaign at a recent event. I can't talk about it yet, but oh, I will have... Oof. Preview up tomorrow morning cool. about the campaign. You get to play as Fireteam Osiris, which is uh, Sergeant Jameson Locke. He's chasing down the Master Chief and Blue Team. If you're into Halo lore, they are Fred, Kelly, and Linda. You know way more about this than I was assuming. <laughs> no, when I yeah, asked no. The question. I, I've read a lot of the books, and I don't know why. You don't usually get into lore. I just think it's pretty interesting sci fi uh, a lot of times, a lot of the novels and whatnot. But. Mm. Essentially, it's you know the first game you're playing, the very first Halo. You think you're one of the last, you're the last Spartan, but it turns out you're not. A bunch survived Reach this from Halo yeah. Reach the battle, and it's really interesting because you play as um, four different Spartans on both teams, and you're kind of chasing down the chief, and it's calling into question whether he's really a good person and a hero. Okay, which is interesting to me because he's always been painted as this, you know, he's bombastic and he's bold and everything, and he's always just blowing up ships in outer space, mm. but. He's kind of been boring up until Halo 4. Um, him and his relationship with Maybe Cortana. Maybe he's a tool of an evil Yeah, and then there's force. something... A cipher? Yes. Mm, there yeah. you go. <laughs> guess we'll find out when gap. Halo 5 Guardians <laughs> comes out on the 25th. Uh, one thing I want to ask both of you guys, November 3rd, do either of you have the need? <laughs> Peter, do you have the need? Uh, I like racing games. Like I'm a, I'm a casual racing whoa, game whoa. fan. <laughs> What? <laughs> what do you think I'm talking about here? Need for Speed. Yeah, Need for Speed's coming. Out. <laughs> you got the need, Mike. The need. Mm, don't think so. Do you have the need? No subtitle. I'll check it out. Need for Speed. Just Need for Speed. We're resetting this game franchise, and yeah. Peter's excited about it. He's got the need. <laughs> I'm interested. I'm curious to see what they're gonna do. Like that series began a long time ago on PC, and I loved it. And over the years, I've just become so jaded with what they've been doing. Mm. Like I love the Hot Pursuit stuff. That was fun. Since then, I've just like I don't really see where it fits in like the you know like the landscape of racing games. Like, why do I really want to play this over you know like say the crew, which I didn't love, but mm. I still enjoyed. Um, Forza, uh, uh, 
Forza Six came out. Stuff. Yeah. yeah, I mean that looks wonderful. Like Gran Turismo, I actually really like Gran Turismo. I know it's got a lot of problems, but there's something about those problems that are endearing to me. Mm. Um, so I just don't. Yeah, we'll see. I'm I'm curious. Like I'm probably gonna play a little bit of it. This has um, the full motion videos, right? Yeah, that stuff's pretty cool. The guy oh, from great. This is a movie a lot of people probably have not seen. Go for it. Uh, Green Street Hooligans. Nope. Made up. Oh, it's yeah, about wait. It's soccer wait. firms. Wait, for, yeah, it's, it's the, the West Ham versus Millwall thing. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, there's a guy in it. His name is Bauer, <laughs> I think, and he's in Jack Need for Bauer. Speed. Yep. That's <laughs> yeah, the one. Yeah, Jack Bauer. And then he voices <laughs> the <K>. Snake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who also is going to be in the full motion videos for Need for... No, I'm just kidding. That's, That's completely well, I moved When I moved to London, uh, the, I was living there three days, and I was overlooking the West Ham... It was like about half a mile away, the stadium, and there was a fire, and it was because Millwall fans had set a car on fire. It's yeah. pretty good. So that's a Need for Speed. Actually, the one thing I like about Need for Speed, or the one thing that's really interesting to in me, is the entire game gets uh, played over the course of one night. Yeah. All those FMVs happen oh, in one night. That's right. Yeah, there's one no endless daylight night. in this game. No daylight. Yep. I remember hearing that and thinking, what? Yeah, we were at Gamescom when he told me that. Yeah. It blew my mind. <laughs> I'm really into it. Um, a couple of days after that, November 6th, Call of Duty time, Black Ops 3. Uh, Call of Duty fans, either of you? I like the campaigns. Mm -hmm. I think they're fun. You excited I don't really for Black Ops for the multiplayer. 3? A little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not, not dying for it, but I'll give it a shot. Yeah, the Treyarch campaigns always kind of deliver. Uh, as far as the first Black Ops was pretty refreshing. It was yeah, definitely. That psychological stuff, and then the JFK conspiracy theories. And we played a lot of Black Ops 3, the beta, on PS4 and Xbox One. Um, you know, Eric Tay and Chris Waters had gotten a lot into it. Rob Hanlery had perfected that glitch ability because, yeah. you know, the multiplayer, they have those, um, the specialist classes now that can you can kind of do these super abilities like you might in Destiny. Yeah, they're doing um, an Overwatch or a, or, a, right. or an every FPS coming out next year. Yeah, I Battleborn. Is, yeah, um, it's the way of things. Battle Cry. So excited about the multiplayer. Uh, Peter, you're excited about the single player stuff. Yeah. Yeah, looks like a strong enough package. I guess we'll know soon enough uh, for Call of Duty fans. Uh, November uh, 6th, that comes out four days before maybe the biggest day of the video game year. <laughs> so many ga games coming out that one day. So many games coming out that one day, but the one everyone wants to talk about right off the bat, uh, Rodea the Sky Ranger <laughs> coming out for Wii U and 3DS. Yuji Naka is a genius. <laughs> Finally, <leave> it that. <laughs> making its way to North America. You know what's crazy is the Wii U version of that game comes packaged with a Wii version of the game <laughs> that isn't a port. It's a totally different reimagining of the game. What? Yeah, it's like two games in one. He's reimagining a game that just released the same Well, day. no, the, the Wii one was finished like a long time ago, and then they came back and they finished the, the Wii U version <laughs> after... It's not just like upgraded visuals. Like, they've changed certain aspects of the gameplay and like... <laughs> I know. I didn't expect you to notice much about Rodea. This is Peter. November 10th. You knock as a genius. Get your, get your pre-orders <laughs> in. Make sure that November 10th, you're not the one waiting in line. Do you have it? Do you have Rodea? No, we're still there. Damn it. If that does happen, there are a couple of other games coming out that day. <laughs> uh, Fallout 4, Rise of the Tomb Raider, and StarCraft 2, Legacy of the Void. Never heard uh. of them. Let's start with Fallout 4, first of all. My goodness. If I wasn't working in video games, I'd be taking a month off. This is yep. like... This is going to be so much fun. Peter, are you excited for, for the, the fourth Fallout game? Okay. I am. <laughs> I am. It's been a long time since I played Fallout 3, but I really like that. And I'm really excited to see that some of the, uh, the id Soft guys have contributed to the shooting aspect of this game, which we all know now is like way better than 3. Yes. The VAT system is no longer a crutch for that broken uh, shooty, shooty, bang, bang stuff. So, uh, no, yeah, I'm really excited. And as someone who really enjoyed... Metal Gear uh, and the way that its open world functioned. I know it's very different from the way Fallout 4's works, but I'm very curious to uh, to see how it impresses me because I'm sure it will, and I'm sure that'll also change you know my, my opinion a bit on what was great or maybe not so great about Metal Gear, and and that's always really fun. I think is having your your thoughts and opinions challenged and learning new stuff. And I think Fallout 4 is a great opportunity for all of that. Yeah, I've driven back into uh, Fallout 3 and I was doing a bunch of like stuff I hadn't done before, like creating new weapons and, you know, like yeah. using the, 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 you know, the whatever, the sheets, schematics you get. And then I was looking back at the trailers for Fallout 4 and like you can build your own weapons out of like anything you want. Like Basically. there's going to be so much depth to this. Uh, really exciting. And it's been five years since New Vegas. So, you know, that's a lot of... Uh, it's going to feel like a much more different uh, Fallout game, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, Mike, uh, what, you uh, take either one of these, Tomb Raider or StarCraft. Which one would you like to talk oh, about? Oh, damn it. Uh, I really... <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a big StarCraft fan, yeah. so I'm looking forward to that, but I think that's one of those games I'll be playing throughout the next year right, or okay. two. And uh, Rise of Tomb Raider, I'm really excited for. It doesn't 
fall as high on my priority list as Fallout 4, but um, both StarCraft and Rise of the Tomb Raider both look great. Um, Rise of the Tomb Raider, I'm excited to see where they take Lara now, because obviously the first Tomb Raider reboot, 2013, was yeah. awesome. I liked it a lot, uh, and I think they did a great job of characterizing her as more than just this action hero. My worry is that the trailer, the gameplay trailer they put out shows her, again, just like straight up murdering dozens of people, which just seems like, yeah. like as fun as the last Tomb Raider was, it just, uh, like I played that game trying not to kill people because it just seemed like A, kind of too easy, and B, just not in the spirit of Tomb Raider. Like yeah. it didn't feel like, like she's just ridiculously OP for some, you know, she's not wearing armor, you know, it was kind of crazy at some stages. And also in the last Tomb Raider, it was just these, it's like a band of Pirates, from what I remember, yeah. but now these guys look like some yeah, Metal Gear up, military force. Yeah, mercenaries. So I guess we'll find out. Uh, yeah, they're looking forward to that one, of course, coming out. Um, all that Xbox One exclusivity nonsense on November 10th. Uh, StarCraft 2 as well. Interesting to think that this is the, I guess, the third, this is the end of their trilogy, which started again five years ago. And it's crazy to think that, uh, like, the StarCraft 2 community is a completely different beast to what it was five years ago to what it was four years ago, like even two years ago. Like at this stage, it's almost like they're releasing a game for a community that's moved on to, to different uh, competitive games. And, you know, like I'm mostly looking forward to playing it so I can enjoy the single player stuff. But um, yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see what the reception is for that. Of course, that's coming out around the time of BlizzCon as well. So. Maybe uh, maybe there'll be a bit more excitement around it uh, come November time. Uh, November 26th, we're not done yet. Trackmania Turbo is coming out. Woo! Yeah. Yes. Any Trackmania fans here? No. Not really. It's a. I played it on VR. <laughs> Did you do the VR thing? Why would I? It's like the one game you should never <laughs> play in VR. Exactly. Because uh, it's like, oh my god, this is amazing, but... It's impossible to turn. You, it's like a, it's like a discipline. And you know, VR is like you put on the headset, and it's all about like moving around the space and moving your head. Never done and it. Trackmania is like a discipline in keeping your head as like tight as possible, because you're like driving into corners, and it's all about like these little twitch driving controls. So if you turn a little bit, like you're done and dusted. It's just one of those experiences is not meant for VR. No. And I don't understand why people try to shoehorn it in there. Because it's in, dumb. In case and they need a crutch. Perfect. In case they need a crutch. No. No. It's a great game. I love Trackmania. Cool. No, I'm looking very forward well, to Turbo. Very well could be a great game, but VR for that, no. Yeah, maybe not. We'll see. Maybe if hey, that, if that's what Morpheus ends up being, just a weird like additive modes to other games, then I'm I'm not so sure. But I love it. Aesthetic looks cool. There's this crazy double driver mode where both of you are driving the car at the same time. So it's like Driver's Ed. Yeah. Yeah, basically, except both of you are driving, not one <laughs> of you at a time, uh, which is pretty good. Look. No, wait. You didn't have the, the the person in the car that had like the brakes. They could apply at any moment. Dude, I I drove in Ireland for like two years at a real license. It's a whole different world. Don't don't even worry about it. Uh, November 26 <laughs> for Trackmania Turbo. Uh, <laughs> December 1st, two more bangers coming out. Let's uh, start first of all with the other uh, the other Avalanche open world game, Just Cause 3. Uh, you weren't a massive fan of Mad Max. Decent enough game. More excited for Just Cause 3? Yeah, like I think there was a few things in Mad Max that were wonderful. Just didn't capitalize on those. Mm. What I've played of Just Cause, the things that are really great are the things you're doing moment to moment all the time. Like moving, blowing stuff up, uh, getting from one spot to another, like gliding through the air, like all of those feel really good and I really liked all of that. So I'm much more optimistic for this. Um, and Mad Max doesn't, look at, you're standing underneath the helicopter. Yeah, what, like, magnet boots. Mad Max hasn't you know, dis <laughs> dissuaded me from Avalanche as a whole. It was made by a different team, mm. like countries apart anyway. But yeah, this game just looks <clears throat> fantastic. So I mean, we'll see. Yeah, looking forward to it. Hit in December. First, the same day as Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, we play a lot of it here in the office. Uh, I'm sure there's a bunch of stuff coming up this week, I think, about Rainbow Six Siege as well. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure how much we can talk about, so I'm not going to talk about any of it. But come back to GameSpot.com for that. Uh, are you guys excited about it at all? It seems like sort of hype around this has sort of waned off a little bit because they've been doing so many betas. And I just alphas. feel like they've been making like spin-offs to Rainbow Six forever. When are they going to come out with Rainbow Seven? <laughs> God! Uh, ah! The door's <laughs> that way. Oh, uh, you're making my puns look good. <laughs> I want Ding Chavez back. You can't have a Rainbow yeah. Six game without some hot Ding and Chavez. Antonio Maldini, <laughs> he was my number two. Oh, really? No one knows who he is, but Antonio I Antonio Maldini? He was also in Green Street Hooligans. I do remember. No, I do remember. <laughs> yeah, he was, the, he was uh, Italian, I think. Well, well the name sounds like Maldini, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Nah. Or is it impossible? He was the uh, <laughs> explosive specialist, yeah. I think, from Rainbow Six. Rogue Spear, which yeah. is the first one I ever played. That was and great. Since then, I've gone into him. Yeah, but Rogue Spear was a game that uh, successfully anticipated an actual war. 
the oh, Russian yeah. invasion the of Georgia. Oh like, shit! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that literally happened four years later. There's a level when you're like into Blitzy, like shooting tanks, and then there was like footage of it happening a couple of years later. That Tom Clancy. Yeah, because yeah, the intro. Clancy. Clancy. The, the intro to Rogue Spear was an actual. They were trying to do one of those news montages. Yes. And it was startlingly realistic for someone like of my age at that I, time, yeah. or art when we were first playing. I got it, it for a while Christmas ago. one year. Yeah. yeah. And then all that stuff started happening. Yeah. And there's like all this shit because the dudes fall real realistically and stuff. It's like watching Black Mirror and then and all then this stuff the happens. prime minister puts his <laughs> his gentleman's junk in a pig's mouth. Yeah. Um, anyway, none of that is in Rainbow Six Siege, but uh, that's coming out December first if you're interested. Uh, and then the last game that's coming out this year. What a year! 2015 for video games. Let's finish it off with just a cherry on top. The US release of Devil's Third coming December 11th. You had to go with that Wii U game? Woo! What about Xenoblade Chronicles X? Yeah, I guess that's coming out too. Oh, you peen. <laughs> <laughs> so, Xenoblade Chronicles, great. Devil's Third, though. Garbage. A hot, a hot <laughs> 3 out of 10 to be given? 3 out of 10. 3 out of 10. Released in Europe. Look at this. Look at that. Whoa, he just disappeared. Uh, European players have been quote-unquote, enjoying this for the past uh, six months or so. It's out in Japan as well, of course. Uh, but yeah, the US release coming December 11th, so make sure you save all those GameStop vouchers you get for Christmas so you can pick this bad boy up uh, in the new year. Uh, and that's all the games coming out. Uh, before we finish, Mike Mahardy, pick one. Favorite game, most anticipated game coming out between now and Jesus time 2015. Fallout 4. All right. Peter Brown. Fallout 4. That's a three. I hate to be lame. It's a... It's kind of a tie between Fallout and Xenoblade Chronicles. Like, yeah, and Devil's Third. One I know what I'm getting myself into, the other one I'm like, what is inside of this a massive game? Mm. So we'll see. Which one but, am I talking about? You don't know. But also, close second is Bloodborne's expansion. Oh yeah! And I'm curious about Battlefront, just because I have some... Mm. I, I'm curious to see how it's going to turn out, because I've, yeah. I've been hearing good things, I've been hearing things that make me hesitate, but we'll see. Yeah, bunch of great games coming out this year. Uh, many we talked about now, many we didn't, so let us know in the comments what your favorite game is coming out between now and December 31st, and also what you think is gonna be Game of the Year 2015, because it is a absolutely crazy year for video games. Oh yeah. Rocket League. Yeah. Who knows? We'll see about that. Let us know in the comments.